All right, everyone, I am here today to debunk myths about how to start and grow a business. I don't know about you, but a lot of people fall into the trap of believing the myths about how to start and grow a successful business. One of those is that you have to be on social media in order to start and grow a successful business. And that just simply is not true. It's not factual at all. And that's only one of the myths we're going to talk about today. There's actually four that I'm going to address. So we're going to, I'm going to say the myths and then I'm going to say the fact and give you some additional information about each fact so that you can start to focus on what is real and what are more, I guess, appropriate or better steps to take than believing these myths or getting sucked into the trap of some of these myths. So myth number one is if I'm not on social media, I can't start a business. Okay, here's the fact. The fact of the matter is that there are opportunities and there's enough information out there to say that you could ask yourself the opposite question. Why not being on social media is the best way to start and grow a business for long-term success. So not just for short-term success, but overall for long-term success. So here's the first reason. One is you have to achieve clarity first. If you go straight to social media, you risk your messaging not being clear. You risk not fine tuning exactly who your ideal or soulmate client is. And you also may not have complete clarity around your why, your purpose, your calling. And if you don't have clarity around how you do it, what you do and who you serve, then ultimately that messaging is going to be confusing. You'll be confused and then your people will be confused. So the number one reason that you should not start a business on, on social media is because you have to start in a place where you're not experiencing distractions that will cause confusion so that you can stay completely clear and your audience will have clarity as well. So you need to build a foundation first. And what do I mean by that? You want to build a foundation on the platforms that you own. At any given point in time, social media can go down. You could lose your followers. You could get hacked. You could lose the content. Any number of things could happen because you don't own those platforms. What you do own are your website, your blog, your email list. So you want to build your foundation on platforms that you own. You want to start your marketing efforts and your brand marketing strategy on platforms that you own, not on social media. Again, because you don't want to be confused and two, because you don't want to risk losing what you've already put out there. And then the other thing is that um, the more, I guess I should say, the more, yeah, the more clarity, the more certainty you have, by focusing only on a few things or one thing, but no more than three things at a time to start and grow your business is you'll have more certainty and then your audience will have more certainty. The more certainty your audience has, then the more they're going to trust you, the more likely that you will be to be able to convert them to paying clients. Okay, let's jump into myth number two. And feel free to put questions and comments in, in the comment section of this. We are live today. Um, anyone listening on the podcast or watching the YouTube later as the replay, again, comment because I will see those on the YouTube channel. But I'll also, if you are listening to this on the podcast, don't hesitate to just hop on over to the show notes and then use the contact form to send me an email with a question if you have any because these are this is really important information so that you don't fall into these traps that people are promoting i guess you could say online there there's so much to be said about building the foundation first and that's why i wanted to come to you today and bust these myths okay i also have a pretty exciting announcement later on in the in the live too all right, so myth number two of four is um, 
I can DIY my business and don't need support. Fact, having support allows you to grow and make money faster. Here's the thing. If you have the help that you need, you are not going to be as overwhelmed. You are not going to get burnt out as fast. Hopefully you won't get burnt out at all. But if you continue down the path of listening to what everybody says online and using social media to build your, your business, those distractions ultimately will result in doubt and fear and confusion and comparison, which all end up in a state of procrastination, a vicious cycle of procrastination, which we want to avoid when we're building our businesses. So having help actually gives you the opportunity for accountability. I, if you have felt stuck at all, chances are you have been in a cycle of procrastination, having accountability by someone else, especially someone else who has gone before you and done all this before, will help you be able to take intentional, effective action instead of procrastinating and not getting things accomplished in the right order or in the right um, way that you could have the opportunity to do should you have the help that you need. Okay. Having uh, help like a coach or a mentor will actually help you get out of your own way. Again, a lot of that mindset work, right? The doubt, the fear, the procrastination, the comparison, imposter syndrome, all of those negative what if thoughts, having a coach will help you get out of your own way to silence that part of your brain and move forward. You don't know what you don't know. I don't know what I don't know. And that's why I have a coach because there are so many times when I am, I do find myself stuck in a state of confusion. And so I need to tap into additional resources and help to be able to move my business forward. We all do. Nobody is meant to do this journey alone. Um, let's see. We talked about avoiding procrastination. Forgive me. I've got some notes up here just to make sure that I cover all of the facts. Um, oh, having help like a coach or a mentor also gives you the opportunity to ask questions and have them answered instead of you spending hours on end trying to find the right answers and then implementing things that don't even work for you because they weren't the right solution. It helps you with your mindset. And we talked a little bit about that already, but those mindset pitfalls can really hold you back from success. And sometimes we don't even realize what those thoughts are that we're experiencing. We think that we're just going about all of the steps and the action items that we should be taking, but we don't understand why we're not getting the results, even though we're taking action. And a lot of times that is due to those what if thoughts, those negative thoughts, the doubt, the fear that we don't even realize we have. And a coach or a mentor can point that out to you. Um, let's see, having a coach or a mentor will also open your eyes to tools, systems, processes, those things that can make your business easier, run on automation, save you time, save you energy, and ultimately save you money. There are so many things out there that you could invest money in, funnels, um, systems, programs, all these things that you don't need especially if you are going into the coaching realm of entrepreneurship, you can do so many things for free. Your monthly expenses can be very, very low. You don't have to have a lot of overhead and you don't have to invest in a lot of systems and tools and, and tech in order to run a successful business. And it also gives you additional perspective. And when I say perspective, it's perspective of, being an online entrepreneur, perspective of building your online visibility, perspective on how to approach sales or PR or other opportunities as you build your brand marketing strategy. All right, we're up to the third myth. The third myth is how um, hiring a coach would take more time that you don't have. Mm, time, right? It's such a sensitive subject because. I don't think any of us believe we have enough of it. But the flip side of that is we all have the exact same 24 hours in a day. But how we choose to spend that time makes a significant difference in 
how our business grows or the success we achieve. So if you fall into that trap of, I don't have time to work with someone or to get help, sit down and think about how much time you're spending researching, looking up the answers to the questions you have, trying to implement things that don't work for you, aren't good for your business, they cost a fortune, and now you're having to spend hours upon hours trying to figure out how to use them and implement them in your business. So if you think you don't have time to hire help, then I want you to do an exercise where you list out all the things you're spending your time on and where do you feel that you're being sucked into activities that are not productive or are not producing results? Because I bet there are a lot, especially if you are on social media scrolling to see what other people in your area of expertise are doing. You should never, ever try to do exactly what somebody else is doing. If you think you're getting on social media for inspiration, I want you to really question that because what ends up happening when you are scrolling on Instagram and you're looking at what other people in your niche are doing, you get sucked into those thoughts of, oh, they're doing that. I should be doing that. Or, well, if that's working for them, it should work for me. But the reality is we have our own unique journeys. We have our own experiences. God is leading us hand in hand to where he wants us to be. So doing what these other people are doing is not necessarily going to resonate with your soulmate clients or your ideal clients. And what ends up happening is confusion starts. And especially from your people, if you're doing things that really aren't aligned with your values, your visions, and your passions, it's going to cause confusion in your messaging. So um, you know, actually having someone to keep you focused on task that will be intentional and effective in your business is key to moving, moving your business to that next level or taking the right steps to get to where you want to go. A, a coach will cheer you on. Sometimes we forget, actually, oftentimes we forget to celebrate. And in order to be a leader, we need to celebrate the small wins. We need to actually take the time to celebrate, to inspire ourselves, to motivate ourselves, to move us into that, the positive mindset that, okay, everything I'm doing is working and people are watching me. People do see me and I can keep going on this path because if the small things are working, every single step I take will end up causing or resulting in the big things working too. Um, a mentor or coach will teach you what um, you need and don't need. And that is such a significant bonus because then you're not wasting your time researching and trying to implement things that are not a good fit or things that don't work for you. And sometimes it's a matter of something so simple that is free, no charge involved that you can apply and use in your business that's going to get you better results than some of these funnels that people are saying, oh, you have to have this and it's going to you know, change your business and you're going to be successful because it's worked for me. So sometimes just having that one-to-one -one interaction with a coach or a mentor will help you be able to discern and decipher all of those things that you're consuming online to see, are they really legit? Are they really going to work for me? Are they appropriate for my business? And is this going to effectively work for my clients? They will also help you create a strategy so that your time is spent more effectively and efficiently. So you're not just doing all of these different things. Everything you're doing is part of an overarching strategy. So it makes sense. You're doing the right things in the right order so that you can grow and you can build upon each step that you're taking. And if um, you're working outside of your business, let me give you a couple of tips as far as managing the time or finding the time to be able to work with a coach or a mentor. So if you're working out, outside of your business, you have a nine to five or you're in corporate, even part-time, how can you find time to work with a coach when you have all of these other demands on your time, a family, a job, whatever? Well, you can take do the coaching sessions on your lunch break. You can get up an hour early and get tasks and chores and things done so that then you can fit it into later in the day. 
You can go to work an hour early and leave an hour early and meet with your coach after work. Um, some coaches will supplement hours so that they can bring you on to their um, coaching program and serve you. It never hurts to ask. And if it, um, I want you to remember that ultimately it takes longer to build a business by yourself than to have someone in your back pocket that you have as a resource, just an extra pair of eyes to review your website, to review your copy, to help you with your mindset. Having those, that, those additional eyes on your business is so important for speeding the process and making it easier. And I'm all about simplifying. And sometimes just having that extra set of eyes on your business is a significant way to simplify and provide simplicity with all of the things that you're doing. Okay, the last one is I can't afford to hire a coach. There are coaches on social media who do charge a fortune. And if you are following those people or you, you see them talking about six, seven, eight figures, it can be pretty intimidating and it can feel very limiting that you don't have access to these coaches. There are a number, a plethora of coaches out there who are affordable, but your affordability is unique to you. And every single coach is going to have a different program, a different cost. And no, there is no such thing as one size fits all when it comes to hiring a coach. But here are some of the ways that if you're struggling to with your mindset around paying for coaching, think about some of these things. If you don't know where to begin or you're not growing beyond your current level, can you afford to be stuck? Can you for, afford to stay right where you are right now? Think about six months from now. Do you want to be right where you are today, six months from now? What would that look like? Would you be excited to be there, the same exact place you are today in six months? Or would you feel deflated and like you're starting to approach burnout or that you are ready to throw in the towel and give up? There's always an ROI with coaching. And sometimes you won't see that up front, but you will definitely see it long term. And one of those key reasons is if you are working with a coach and you are improving how you're thinking, what your beliefs are around you and your business, what your beliefs are around your idea of clients, what your what your thoughts are around everything that you're doing in your business, those will pay off immensely in the long term. And you will also have more opportunities to attract clients faster. If you attract clients faster, obviously you're going to make money faster. And the, the key to, to me, the biggest thing is you'll be able to have a meaningful impact faster. You can ask coaches that you are considering hiring, or if, if you're evaluating hiring a coach, ask about a payment plan. Most coaches will offer a payment plan nowadays. Um, you can take out a small business loan. You can borrow money from a family member. You could um, borrow money from a savings account. You could sell things that you don't need, you don't use. You could also look at PayPal zero financing program and take out a small loan from, from PayPal and pay it back gradually. There, there are so many resources out there for obtaining the funding that you need. And you can start with your local bank if you, if you want to. But investing and in yourself, investing in yourself and your business is going to change the trajectory of your life and your business. It's going to transform every single day that you are working in your business or working on your business or working with your clients. So ask yourself, if you want your business to succeed, can you afford not to have the help that you need? So I want to point out a couple of statistics really quickly. So we know that about 20% of businesses started fail within the first year. That number goes up to about 50% at five years and then about 65% after 10 years. So if you're not building that foundation from the beginning and you're, you're using platforms that put you at risk of losing everything, then that rate, that percent is actually going to go higher faster 
So you want to make sure that you're establishing that solid foundation first, and then you can go on social media to build relationships. You can use other platforms, but the key is to build the foundation first. If you think about it, which do you think would move the needle on your business faster, get you to the next level faster? Would it be being on social media or would it be having a coach? I'm gonna put all my eggs in the basket of hiring a coach because that is where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck. And that's where you're gonna start, um, I guess, get the most value out of the time that you spend. Um, my dog is having a fit. So it. anybody who's listening to this, I don't edit these podcast episodes because um, I want them to be as though you're in the live training. And my dog has been going crazy. She wanted to get to me. So if you heard her in the background, scratching at the door and barking, I apologize. Um, okay. So I want to tell you guys that when I started my business, I thought I had to be on social media. I spent a great deal of time building out my, my social media pages and doing all of these things. And I did get sucked into that comparison trap. I got sucked into trying all the things. And all that did ultimately was confuse me. And when I went off of Instagram this year and started focusing more um, on things that were more meaningful and could have a better impact, I have to tell you, my business transformed. So here are just a few of the things that happened um, when I went decided to go off of Instagram for good. So number one is I had my best month ever. I made empowering and impactful decisions for my business. I was able to focus better. My confidence grew, which we know that, you know, the more confident we feel about our business and ourselves, the more certainty we're going to have, the more clarity we're going to have, and the more clarity and certainty our audience is going to have around us or about us and our businesses. Um, I was able to apply, spend time applying and was accepted to international speaking engagements. I, my one-to-one -one client roster grew, which is so key. I had a record number of discovery calls. I was able to pitch more podcast interviews for PR, which also attracted more clients to me. And I made more money. I made more positive decisions. I was less distracted and I was more focused, which ultimately all of those things combined means I was more successful because every action I was taking was intentional. I wrote and published more blog posts. I wrote and published more podcast episodes and I created a group coaching program for you. So I want to tell you a little bit about that now. Um, because I think that it's just time to make this introduction. I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times uh, in the past, and I want to mention it again because it's going to be so incredibly awesome, and it, I am just so excited about it. So it's um, so possible to, I guess, let's, let's say this, it's, it's so possible and the best part is if you have been stuck and knowing, not knowing where to begin, or if you have been stuck in not like at the same level, the current level, not able to, to grow, not able to attract new clients, not able to build the business of your dreams in the time frame you wanted, the Purpose to Results Academy will help you. We will help you in the academy to build the foundation, like I mentioned first, but do so with simplicity so that you aren't grasping for straws. You're not all over social media or all over the web trying to figure out what steps to take and what's going to work for you. All of the things that I have in the Purpose to Results Academy are things that are tried and true. I have tried them. My clients have tried them and they work. I want you to be able to make money and have a positive, meaningful impact on your clients and the world faster. And I truly believe that the Purpose to Results Academy is how to do that. So the Purpose to Results Academy is for faith-centered, service-oriented, ambitious, 
impact driven women who want to start and grow their business with simplicity without social media. So if that description fits you, I encourage you to get on a discovery call with me. Let's chat about the Purpose to Results Academy. And if you're not quite ready to take the next step to get on a discovery call, download our free ebook on how to grow, start and grow a business without social media, because I think you'll get a ton of information there. And that is really a summary of what the program is going to encompass. So you'll get a good feel for what I'll be teaching and what we'll be working on to build that solid foundation so that you can achieve so that you can achieve long-term success. All right, this concludes our training today. And of course, my dog barks again, but that's okay. You guys, I'm real. I, this is my messy life and I'm coming at you this way because that's just how my, my day is going and that's that. All right, have a great afternoon and I will see you live again next week. <laughs>